Now, circular text is not really that complicated, but you might not know about certain tips and tricks how to use the type tool to actually make your text flow exactly where you want it, either along a circle or half circle or any kind of round design that you're working on. Now, this can be really helpful for logo design or sticker design, or even if you want to create a rubber stamp out of your design. And I would like to show you what to do to make your text flow the way you want. Now let's have a look at the first example. We have a word on top and we have a word on the bottom. On the top we read from the left to the right and on the bottom we'll read from the left to the right. Compared to the other side we have another design where we have the word repeating but it repeats around the circle. Basically it starts reading from the left to the right and continues. Now let me show you how you can create those two effects. Let me zoom out. Now for the first design we just simply want to create a circle with a stroke and no fill. Once you've created the circle we'll open up the type tool you can find it in your toolbar on the left. And when you just press and hold, you'll get all of the type tools that Illustrator has to offer. Now I usually expand all of those tools. And all we have to do is click this little bar on the right, and then we'll separate all of the type tools from the toolbar. You're not really taking them out of the toolbar, you're just making them available, and so you can drag them anywhere on the artboard. Now for the first example, we're looking for type on a path tool. Once you select it, you can see a wavy line, and then you can place the cursor on that particular line where you would like your type to fall. Now, in this case, I'm going to click, and now my text will fill it in with lorem ipsum since I have turned on an illustrator under preferences, type, fill new type objects with placeholder text. So you can select this and start placing the type tool anywhere on the artboard. It will fill it with a placeholder text. This can be really helpful if you already know you have a text box, and it gives you a lorem ipsum right away. If you don't like it, just make sure that you untick fill new type objects with placeholder text. Now in this case, we're going to replace the text with the word flower. From the character panel, I'm using Leto and I'm going to increase the text. And as you noticed, in the circle now, you have several guides. Let me zoom in so we can explore it better. So we typed our first word and then you can see a very tall guide, usually falling in the middle. This guide will indicate where your text will fall. You can either have it run along on the outside of your circular path or you can push it into the inside. Here let me just show you if I push it into the inside it will now fall along in the inside of my circle and if I push it on the outside you can see it will fall along the outside again. Now I have my bounding box ticked on and so let me undo this so it's less confusing. And then we have other guides usually one starting with the first letter and then one ending with the last letter. They're usually very close together and I can separate them. So I have the first guide here with my first letter, meaning this is where my text will start, going all the way around on my circular path, and then ending here with the last guide that you can see. You can pull this as well, and you can literally restrain the word. If you know that you're not going to add any more text, you can have it end at the last letter of your word. This way it's easy to move your text around. In the middle, we have our middle guide indicating where our text will fall, on the outside or the inside, and you can select this one to really position your text. Both guides will fall along, the one starting with the first letter and the one ending with the last letter. So the middle one you can grab to either position your text along the path and then also decide if it will fall on the outside or on the inside. When I deselect everything, you can see that my original circle has disappeared. We don't see it anymore. It has been now turned into a text path. If we have a look at our first design, we would like to create another text on the bottom. Now for this we need to create a copy. Now there are three ways to go about creating a copy. You can either select it, drag it to the side, create the other word, and then select both of them again and align them. You can select it, create a copy, and then paste it in front, where it will place it directly on top of the other. Or in my case, I'm just going to use a shortcut on the keyboard. So let me zoom in. All you have to do is make sure that you're going to select one of the guides, either the starting guide or the ending guide, you could also select the middle guide, but in this case I'm going to choose the starting guide. I'll press and hold the optional alt key on the keyboard and then simply drag my text to the bottom. I have text now on the bottom. I have my two cursor arrows indicating that I created a duplicate and as soon as I let go, I, you can see that I have now copied the text on the bottom. The text is reading now from the right to the left, but we would actually have it to read from the left to the right, just how we see it on top. Now for this to happen, we have to push the text into the inside. So as I showed you before, you will select the text and find the tallest guide and then push it into the inside. And at the same time, I'm going to separate my starting and finishing guide so I know where exactly my text will fall. 
and then I can position it again perfectly underneath my text from above with my middle guide here. This text is really offset, but we would like to have it to be on the same path. And of course, you could select it and increase it with the scale tool, but then it gets really tricky to position it exactly, and then you have to adjust the text size, and that's a lot of work. There's a much easier way. All we have to do is keep our text selected, go and find the type on the path tool, and then double click it. We'll get the type on the path options, and here we can set where we're going to align the text. Basically, we're going to set the path that the text will fall along. Currently, it's set to baseline. So when I check the preview, now let me go through the options what we have. We have a sender, we can align it with the ascender, we can align it with the descender, or we can align it with the center. Now, when you see when I align it with the center, it will fall within the center of our path. Now we're going to click OK, and then all we have to do is select our top text and repeat the step. So select it, double click on the type on the path tool. In the pop up, change the align to path. Just make sure you check the preview so you know what's happening from baseline to center. And then we'll press OK. Sometimes you have to switch back to the selection tool and then make sure that your ending guide is pushed away from the last letter of your text. And then we can position it properly. So I'll select it and make sure the text falls underneath each other. And then, of course, I can change the wording itself. I'm going to change it into house, position it into the middle, then I've now duplicated the look from the first design on top here. Now, one thing you might notice as soon as you create a path, circular, a straight line, or even a curved line, and then you use the type on a path tool, this path will be turned into a text path, so your original path disappears. Now, of course, we need to create more circles to create this look from above. So I'm simply going to set my stroke to black, the fill to none, and then create a circle in the middle. And then I'm going to select all of it with the align tool center align it, and then make a copy of my circle and place it onto the outside. So copy and then co paste in front. And then with the scale tool, I'm scaling it up. Now from the top design, we have extra design elements. We have parts of a circle falling on the right and the left that falls directly with the path where the text is on. Now we do not have this circle anymore, and of course we could just wing it, create a copy of the circle, and then place it approximately into the middle. But if we want to be specific and correct, we just need the size of our circle being the exact same size of the text path that we have for our words now. And we can't see the path itself anymore. But there's a way to actually get it back. So let me show you how we can do this. So I'm going to zoom in. Our original circle disappeared and was turned into a text path. And when we select it, we can see this because we can type the text, we can move the text, we can use the guides. But when I switch to the direct selection tool and then turn on my smart guides under view, smart guides, and then hover over it, I can see the path where the text falls along. Now, when I select it once, it will only select either an anchor point that I um, accidentally fall on or the path in between two anchor points. So I can't really select it and copy it. I would just copy a segment of the path. But what we can do in this case, we can hover over the path and then press and hold the optional Alt key. You'll see a plus sign and then click once on the path and it will select all of the path. You can see we don't have a fill or stroke. And then we're simply going to create a copy of it. So simply press Command or Control and C and then Command or Control and V. And now we've pasted our path and we can then give it a color for the stroke. Now with my smart guides on, I can position it again and I have the exact same path where our text falls along, but as a path shape again with a stroke applied to it. I couldn't do this any other way because if I select my text and then give it a stroke, you'll see it will put the stroke around the text because we're working with a text shape. So then we'll just select our circle and then with the scissors tool, I can just cut it into pieces. Select the parts that you would like to delete and then you delete them. Now this is how you can create circular path where the text on the bottom reads from the left to the right, just like the text on top. Now this is a way how you can create and align your circular text. Now the same goes for the second design. We just need to create a circle. Switch to the type on the path tool, place where we would like the text to start, and then I'm just going to paste my copy. And of course with the shortcut pressing the optional Alt key, I'll just create a copy on top, and then just play with the guides to put it into the position where I like my text to fall. After that, I just need an element into the middle, and then here I have my text. Again, if I wanted to, I could select the text, double click on my type on a path option, and then change the align to path from baseline to either ascender, descender, or center. And of course, if I do it with one text, I need to do it also with the other. Sometimes it can get frustrating when you select the text and then you have to find the guides and then push them close or away from your text. You just have to remember you usually have a guide with the first letter and then a guide 
with the last letter or where your text needs to stop. And this is what you can do with the type tool when working with circular type. Here's an example what you can do with it. You can use it for either creating a logo mark or any kind of other brand elements. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give it a like and I'll see you next time.